Hi everybody. Well, it's a couple days before Christmas and this video probably won't actually go out until next week before you actually see it. But uh, I need to get some more of my cow pens cleaned out before it freezes really hard. It's been pretty cold, but not that bad. I was able to yesterday get the um, one pen cleaned out where the big cows go and that went well. And today I'm do going to do where the small calves go and uh, or the the weanlings are and we'll get that cleaned out later in the video i hope to show you or help, hope to attempt something new so i hope you hold you know wait around to see how i go about moving a round bale which i've never done before i'm trying something new today we have uh lady and bill and they're ready to go here and we'll get them hitched up in just a minute but it's been a kind of one of those days I was hoping to have this all job almost all done by now. But I've had quite a few people stop. And so I'm not getting as much done as I'd hoped for. I want to come in my sawmill and show you a couple things. I've been so busy. I actually started this month out thinking I could do a whole bunch more videos. And I, I did do a lot of videos. We started the video. We started the month off doing a lot of videos, but um, it's just been too much for me. Um, it takes a long time to do a video, and I just have not had the time to do it. There's just been so many other things going on. As you can see right here, this is a sled that I showed you a few videos back that I was hoping to get fixed and to be able to use for a single horse. And here it still sits. I haven't done a thing with it except for tip it over to see what needs to be done. I need a little bit of welding done on this one runner, steel runner, and then I'm putting some wooden kind of shoes type of thing on it. And there it sets. I haven't done a thing with it. And then today, a guy brought over a couple, a double set of sleds that I ended up buying. This is a set of sleds that are are going to be, and that's what they're made for, for logging. They have this big bunk on it that the logs will sit on. Not everything is here, and it's pretty ripe sled. It's not in that great of shape at all. I would like to get it. All I'm missing for it mostly is just another the front bunk, which goes down here, and I'm sure you can't see it very well, but if I actually get to it and get it fixed up, I can show you more. It's not a sled that I can go and work really hard with because, you know, go into the woods and really log hard with it because it's, it's too old of a sled, but all the steel on it is good. And so I want to try it, get a new front bunk on and just try it to see if it's something that would work for me. And I think it is. And then maybe next summer I can get somebody to redo the whole thing and put all new wood on it. It's got runner chains, which are these right here. It's the chain right here, which if I ever get it going, I can explain it to everybody. As a matter of fact, I can explain it right now. If you're going along, this is on the back bunk and you come to the top of the hill, these chains are dragging. You flip these chains underneath the runner like this. And then you take Then you take this apparatus right here and put it through one of the links. And then this ring will drop over that like that. And then everything drags. And when you pull ahead, this chain will stay underneath the runner. And then that will be tight, tight, and it'll help slow your sled down. And when you get to the bottom of the hill, you just knock this ring out and it all falls apart. and and off you go again. So that's kind of nice, but as you can see, it's the board's broken there and it's in pretty bad shape. But anyways, I will continue showing that process on this sled if I even get to it. I've got to, I've got a log job I gotta finish up this year. So as soon as the weather really turns into winter, we've got to jump right on that and be working on that and try and get that done. The reason I'm doing my pens right now is because for one, they need to be cleaned, but for two, it's a it's still fairly warm. And if you wait till it freezes, the manure will freeze and I can't clean it. So whenever 
There's always stretches during the winter where you have a little bit of a thaw. And during that time, I have to jump right on these pens and get these cleaned out and the manure spread because otherwise it just, I can't do it. The problem right now with spread manure though is the ground is not frozen. There's snow on top of it. So that actually insulates it and stops it from freezing. And so um, you've got to really pick and choose where you go with the spreader. If I go in a spot that's too wet and too soft, I'll make ruts. And I don't want to do that because then it'll, it's on grassland. And if you make a rut, you can't smooth it out and you've got to deal with that rut until you plow it up and seed it down again. So we have to be careful where we go and, and how we spread the manure. But I have some spots that aren't too bad that I can, I can do that with. Okay, this is the pen we're gonna clean out today. Although I've got some other people coming here very soon for some lumber, so I may not get very far on this project. I might have to finish it up tomorrow. But anyways, um, this is the, the, the heifers and bowls that I had from this year. And I gotta move them into the next pen. Anyway, guys, I gotta throw this bale over here and climb in and get them into the other side. All right, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, follow me. Follow me. Come on. Spread this out so they can come in here. Get the blacks out here. We hitched onto the sleigh ride sled this morning with those guys. With these all in here, I'll see if I can get out of here without getting kicked. Come on guys, get out of the way. It's amazing, you'd think these little critters would be nice and friendly, but I don't fool with them and they have a habit of liking to kick their heels up and that hurts. Okay, so that gate's shut there. I wanna move this, this gate here. Get it out of my way. Because I need this back wall to push against when I'm pushing the manure around. Okay, now I just gotta take down this set of lumber rollers that I use with these cows. It works good, they stick their heads through here and these rollers spin like that so they can stick their head in and out easily. And I feed them most of the time on this other side. Sometimes I'll throw some hay inside, but most of it stays right at the front. So I will get that out of there and then hitch onto the manure spreader. Well, I just got a phone call and I've got to run to the sawmill and cut some one by twos for a customer of mine. And so we'll have to hold off on the horses. Like I said, I've had quite a lot of interruptions today. Sorry about this little stretch. I messed up on my audio. So you're not going to be able to hear me very well. Throw on some one by sixes to make some one by twos. So I'll throw this one log off and grab some one by sixes. It seems like interruptions are kind of the, what happens on this place. And I'm sure many of you are very used to interruptions on your place too, especially if you have a, a business. We will start the mill and just make two cuts to make uh, um, nine one by twos, which is all we need to make out of this for my one customer here.
Okay, that job's done. Maybe we can get back to getting that pan cleaned out. Got that. Cheek. Cheek. Bye. 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 Hey. Hey. Get a bell. Get in there. Hey. Cap stop. Feel it. Oh. nice thing about these rollers, flip them over like that, roll them right out. I would bet some of you farmers out there know what I'm dealing with right at this moment. But I'll try to explain it to other people. What I have got here is because I've thrown in a whole bunch of hay, um, mostly for feeding and they've eaten most of it, but still a lot of it gets trampled on when they're in a situation like this. So what's happening is I'm trying to pick it up with a bucket and it won't pick it up. All it's doing is rolling into it like a ball. So what I'm gonna do is go back and put my forks on and see if I can't pick up a bunch of it up with my forks. I'm gonna take it out into the cement pad and see if I can't break it up a little bit before I put it in the spreader. Because as a lot of you people know that have horse-drawn manure spreaders or ground-driven manure spreaders, um, if you put too much of this hay that's intertwined so much like it is into the manure spreader, then the first thing you end up with is a plug up. And especially with some snow on the ground, the tires are just gonna drive. So let me show you what I do. So as you can see, I couldn't touch that with the bucket, but my forks, I was able to scoop that, that whole bunch and I will take it out to the cement pad and just kind of shake it till it breaks up a little bit and then I'll put it in the spreader. 
I have two forks under my skid steer right now and that's all I would normally have. There's times where I will actually get a second set of forks. So I have four forks on here and that works even better than two. So I got enough there, I think. I just gotta put it on the manure spreader, but even, even now after I broke it up some, I still gotta be careful and shake it out pretty good going into the spreader so it doesn't plug me up. Pump right there, so if I don't shake it out, I'm gonna run into trouble. Okay, we're loaded, but this is a very, very light load. It's almost all hay. And so um, I'd like to put a whole bunch more on, but I've had so much troubles with these spreaders. And that's one big disadvantage about horse-drawn equipment and ground-driven equipment. Um, when you've got a load like this and those beaters, if it doesn't spin fast enough, the beaters have to spin extra fast in the apron, which is this chain right here, which drags the stuff back to the beaters has to go pretty slow because if you go too fast with it, it'll plug everything right up and then the tires will drag and, and you gotta go fork it all out by hand. Um, matter of fact, I think I'm gonna grab myself a fork just to take along with me, just in case I have troubles. But I spread yesterday and I had some hay stuff in there and it went pretty good. So I'm hoping it'll go okay today. But we'll, we'll see how this goes and go dump this off. So I was able to get this load off just fine. I just had to go kind of slow with the apron so it didn't push the beaters too fast, but we got that done all right. This video is taking a little bit longer than I thought for, and I know you're excited to see what I'm going to try to do with the round bale, something I've never tried before, but I'm afraid you're going to have to wait till tomorrow's video to see that, and uh, we will show you a couple new things, or at least attempt to show you a couple of new things. So have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.